Welcome to Still Talking Uncut. I'm your host, Big Easy from Fibbly Moonshine. Got your other host over here, Mr. Bushlight Apple, Sean Rixby, Master Distiller. Uh, we got a special guest today, uh, the legendary godfather of Thumper Jar, Mr. Rick Gibson. You know, we, uh, you know, in, in case you're wondering, this is probably going to be a shit show. So just buckle up and everybody banned from YouTube. And hold on. Hey, you can't get banned from YouTube. <laughs> challenge accepted <laughs> well you think we're here it's you can't get banned from youtube so, so you know we uh like i said we appreciate you being on here rick take the time out of your we don't schedule do. uh but you know so we well, just done this live at the jam <laughs> i mean it, it's a possibility if the internet will hold up we could we could definitely do a huge you know everybody get drunk and scream over each other <laughs> type of live 10 people <laughs> yeah, we can we'll figure that. it out so hell yeah hell so what yeah. you what you got over there sean i know i know rick ain't drinking on nothing so i'm drinking on something oh damn well, red right, bull or mountain dew let, let's let rick go first yeah see i i knew that's what rick was drinking on water that's a first we gotta hydrate man he's gonna have no red you, bull no mountain dew yeah, when, he he's been hydrating for two weeks, waiting on this a weekend. Yeah, you know you don't wind up stuck to a bed with cotton mouth. You better be hydrated. Oh, so I need to. <laughs> I've been drinking Gatorade all day. Do I need uh, to bring a leash with me this weekend? A what? A leash? Probably yeah. So shock. <laughs> so you don't get lost. You don't get any one of those. I wasn't lost. I knew where I was at. Get him one of those dinosaurs that go around the back and strap on so he don't get lost. Like, Either way, I don't care. Because, put you it, know, if, if he gets lost, you're going to have to put out a silver alert. Put a, put a tracking device in it. <laughs> lost senior citizen. So. <laughs> there you go. You can't get up. <laughs> so, all right, what you got over there, Sean? Well, let's, let's get this out of the way the before normal, we divulge into this. The slide apple. And uh, there's a guy named Chad that made some peach brandy from up north. And if he's watching, he probably ain't. I don't blame him. Uh, yeah. Do you ever see anybody watch these? Yeah, there's four people on here right now. Right now. Four people? Four. Yeah, imagine four. that. Hold on. One, Man. two. Yeah. Is that counting us? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> if it's count, I'm two people, so. And you're like half a person, so. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Rick. Well, so, you know. I've, for anybody, I, go ahead. No, go ahead. Sean. Say for anybody that's watching, the camera on, over at Rick's house is about two foot from the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I'm just drinking on some uh, honeymoon shine I made. Some honey shine. One fifty or? Nah, it's like a hundred. I got some. Uh, I got some honey from Ohio bees. There's a guy not far from me. He's got hives. Um, up north of here and he gave me a really good deal on 30 pounds of honey and i turned it into 10 gallons of wash and made made a honey shine out of it through like Hell 10 yeah. pounds and a thumb keg you know and i'm with sean i like this a lot better at 150 than i do at 100 yeah uh, for but, whatever reason it just tastes better there's more flavor in it i don't know why so yeah this water so. good at zero proof <laughs> so uh <laughs> Wait, ready? Guess the proof. That's that's the same thing Sean makes. <laughs> yeah, that's the same thing Sean gets out of the end of a worm. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I first met Rick um, last year, you know, a year ago, at the jam was the first time I I met Rick in person, and you know, just it was like you know, whenever I meet somebody and they're they're small, I just want to hold them like a baby, you know, like. So pick him up and hold him. Uh, Rick, but his head you know. would be like <laughs> yeah, we, bouncing around. What? But, uh, it, your ass went to work as soon as you got there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he went to work till you stole his stuff, <laughs> stole his torch. What are you talking about. But, you know, I yeah, met Rick for the first it. time, and, you know, it was, uh, you know, it was like family. Rick treats you like family. And, <laughs> you know, I was. I'm really impressed by the works of art that Rick creates with Thumper Jars. Um, you know, it was one of the things that every time you make something and I see it, I'm like, man, that is an amazing work of art. Cause that's what I see it as. 
I see it as more than just a still or, you know, a distillation unit. And I see it as a work of art, and that's what they are. So, you know, and well, in my mind, you're art, you're an artist, you know, you're, you're uglier in all sin. And, <laughs> you know, I, I still love you, but. Ball but spring. Yeah, you're not. We won't even talk about your offspring. In case anybody was wondering, um, Rick is Sean's dad. So, um, if no DNA test needed, we just we know it is, and we we don't question it. So, you know, I would I would ask Rick how he first met Sean, but um, I guess you know he created him. That's when he first met him. So. <laughs> Okay, first off, fuck you guys. I don't even remember. Uh, Internet. It was on uh, All uh, right, so I've talked enough. I'll shut up. I think yeah. Sean's got some questions for you. Let's uh, uh let's this, get this shit show rolling. This should be interesting. Oh, it ain't nothing too bad, man. So, uh, tell us how you got your start in building moonshine stills. Is that is that how you got started? Uh, in the business or the shit well, side of things, or my kid had a school project. He was in fourth grade. Something that changed the course of history in America, and I made a moonshine still. And I made the, I made a small one, which I got it right here. Kind of dirty. It's been up on the wall. It's very old. Well, I can only see half of it. Hold on, is that the pot right there? No. Uh, was a toilet or a float for a toilet, a copper float. <laughs> so I made that the pot, then got a little bottle right here for a thumper, and then a worm. See, I can't do a worm, Sean. <laughs> That's the first worm I've ever seen. Rick, yeah. that's probably the only one I'll ever no see. And that, right. it is. Water in the pot and put a little candle, a sternal candle under it, it would actually come out clear. So hey, easy, you're flickering. <laughs> Got work with if I could make a bigger one, so that's how it all started. That was probably two years before the Moonshiner show come out, maybe three. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Ig ignore it. You can't hear it flickering. So, so what? Uh, what? Where did you go from there? I mean, what did you do? A. Uh, I done uh, like little stock pot steel, stove top steels. And that's where I learned how I taught myself how it, it all worked as far as like bins and the way you run the pipe and uh, all that, how to make the joint work right. So you started out making uh, stovetop stills? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, about about what size were they? Two to five gallons. Did you look at those Top shots in trouble again. Or a three gallon, the stock pots that they had, I was just getting those. Hey, was you just uh, was you um, taking them straight to a worm, or would you did did you have a thumper jar on them then, or it had a tower that I, I built a little tower with pint jars on it and half pint jars. Uh, okay, Same with the big ones, but it's just smaller for that pot. So is is that where you started uh, using mason using jars? Yeah, was you started there and then. Um, then how long before you moved up to bigger and then you finally got up to, did you move up to court jars before you ended up, you know, selling on half gallons or? Probably. I've done those for a couple of years. Made a bunch of them. Hold what, on. the court jars? Uh, the court jars? No, with the uh, half pint and the pint jars. I've done those for a couple of years. No and shit. Then I started putting them on a beer keg. And so I got to go bigger. So I started doing uh, pot or quarts and half gallons on those. Huh. But I figured it out on the stove because I was trying to make moonshine. <laughs> and every time I was trying to do it on those little stove tops, everybody in my family had to come here and make something in the microwave. Of course, it's above the stove. <laughs> but I had to move it, I mean, constantly. So I said, well, shit, you're a dumbass. So I just built it around the door of the microwave. But when I did that, that's what <laughs> The more you put, you know, you could do something to it and have actually make it produce more proof. Yeah. That's how that all started. Then it was like it was on at that point. <laughs> so <clears throat> the million dollar question, have you ever blew a jar? Ever blew a jar. 
Yeah. Have you have you ever had a jar blow up on you? No, um, crack or break on you. Nothing. Because you know that's what that's what you hear a lot of. It's like, oh, those are they're not safe. They're not. It's, and I'm like, I'm like, dude, if you uh. You know, you can in these things. <laughs> like, you store yeah. food in these forever. I put it like this. Boil them, heat them up. Like, the hours running these things and building them. And I mean, I, I don't baby them. When I, I run, when I run the living dog shit out of it, I want to blow the jars off of it. I've never blew a jar off of it. So, you can take that for, I mean, people can say what they want. Facts are facts and bullshit is bullshit. So, yeah, I mean, I've ran them. And, uh, Hell if, Sean, I, if something fucked up, it's my fault. It was my fault, and I've yeah, never busted a jar. <laughs> if Sean don't fuck it up, man, it's got to be uh, fuck up yep. proof. So, <laughs> so, right. so um, when you got you, so we first got you start um, with the jars. You know, he's making them yourself. Um, when did you decide to uh, you know take it to the next level and start um, producing them? You know, for people. You know, like what. Well, I done what, it. For, what got you to that point first? And they was using them, and they kept on. They kept. They was using them, and they were selling them to their, you know, other people that seen them. Oh, I couldn't get it. The then they told me they talked me into doing a, a Facebook page. Okay. A while after that, but I mean, I was probably building and selling 25, 30 of things a week. And, and is that just for the little um, for the? Uh, keg setups or oh, for the uh, for the, the little two gallon to three gallon stock pots. Okay, I taught yeah, myself that's... water and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Had zero cool told me how to do anything. It's you see, you know, you see it a lot where people started a long time ago and they had no choice but to figure it out themselves because there wasn't you know walkthroughs and this and that you know yeah. so it's like. You're you're an OG, <laughs> you know. You're original, you know. You could, all the way from the beginning. Um, yeah. Well, go ahead. well, back then he was on that uh, distillers org or some shit, weren't, weren't you, Rick? That the website. One, that website. They put me on there. They made it their own little fucking what not to do, and I was part of that. <laughs> so all those idiots kept on chiming in on my Facebook page, and I just blast their ass on there. I didn't give a shit, you know. Get the fuck back there. I run so past anything. So you was a topic of a forum of what yeah, not to do right. because because you're using mason jars and then yep. and then and now it's amazing you know to where you see those mason jars you see those mason jars at big time shit now you know and and so when when did you switch over to like like what got you more mainstream with um, building the giant rigs you know like the, the, the more amazing people, just the more people it, that was using them. You know, word of mouth, and then you know, had a couple of distilleries want to try them, and this, well, that's just the way it went. So, hey. to date, what is, was your favorite one that you built, and what distillery is it at? If it's at one, huh? <laughs> I built four million of them. I can't remember them all. <laughs> I would say that my favorite one was probably Jimmy Jack's. Oh yeah, that's that. Well, well, explain that story, Rick. How, how did that one come about? <clears throat> hey, hold on, where, long... where is Jimmy Jack's? You know, uh, what are we talking about here? You know, we we're, were talking about a distillery. Uh, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll back info. Yeah, we. You know, we know what we're talking about, so. He's in Pennsylvania, Jim, uh, Jimmy Jack Sean Shack's the name of it. Okay. So, I, we was going back and forth for probably six months to a year, talking shit. Imagine that. That sounds like the <laughs> only Rick or Sean. So, this son of a bitch, he gets drunk at the bar at his distillery, him and his cousin-in-law. Bill, can we? Be a good idea to drive down here and make and get a steal from me from Pennsylvania. And I hadn't even started on it. So he calls me. He says, Hey, man, go ahead and start that thumper. I want to come and get it. I said, If you drive down here, I'll have the son of a bitch waiting on you when you get here. And so I didn't think so I thought he was just talking shit. So I went to deer camp. We set up a damn deer blind. I was there all day. I got home at six o'clock. Well, my phone was blowed up in my Jeep. 
So I, I look at it, and he's got pictures of road signs from different states with his fucking bottle of liquor set beside of it on his way down here. And I hadn't even heard on his shit. So I call him. I said, man, you better have that better be picture before you went to Popcorn Jam, asshole. He said, oh, no, we're in Virginia. We're headed your way. And told me he'd be here at 6 o'clock in the morning. So at this point, it was 930. And I started on his shit. A small little setup had six jars on it or five jars. I can't remember. But uh, next thing I know, it's 630 in the morning and he opens the door of my shop and walks in. I see you motherfucker. I'm sitting here looking at the and I got my hand on it. I've been up all night working on his shit. And he gets here. We finish it and uh, go do breakfast. And he goes back home. He didn't even stay 30 minutes. <laughs> Made you stay up all night. <laughs> oh, yeah. Breakfast and then back on the road. <laughs> so you know um like the the like sean has uh you know i've seen the picture of the one um where's the uh your old still at that um you know what i'm talking about sean your old still the hexagon with the jars oh that's your uh, local come on Hall brother how brothers distillery okay yeah see i that was the first thing that i had seen that um you had built that still's got history behind it. Go ahead and tell the story behind that still. We'll do with that. All right. So uh, now, now we're talking about um, this still's at. Where, where's this at, Sean? All Brothers Distillery in Dayton. In Dayton, Ohio. Yep. And uh, this was uh, Sean's old still. So we uh, – who had that first? Was it uh, – uh, Chad Earp. Yeah, Chad Earp had it. And then it went from him to – well, I got it. <clears throat> him, I was going to, Van was needing a steal for the Spoonshiner show. So I got that yeah. steal, cleaned it all back up, and took it to Van's house. Well, then, of course, Magilla, being as how much they love me, said, no, we can't use that. It's way too fast. But then the next season, you see a steal that's got fucking 50 jars hanging off the side of it with sight glasses all over it, but that was okay to put in the woods. <clears throat> so, I mean, that's how that started. Then they wouldn't let him use it, so I went and got it, and that's how I ended up with it at that festival. The Moonshiner's Ball. Yeah, because Alvin was going to do a demonstration on how to how to run it with just water in it. Yeah, and that turned real quick. <laughs> well, that guy <laughs> about a young guy. <laughs> <clears throat> he said, be nice if we could run some liquor in that thing. It sure is pretty. I said, well, if we had enough wine, we could run it. He <laughs> said, you can make liquor out of wine? I said, yeah, it's going to taste like shit, but it will still be liquor. He says, well, how much wine you got? And I looked at Robert Smith, and he didn't even hesitate. He grabbed Tammy by the arm. They took off to the store. They went to two liquor stores, and Kroger <laughs> popped out every bottle of wine they had. The finger <laughs> we had fucking gallon jugs everywhere. We filled it. We put the, about probably 50 gallons of wine in that still. That's awesome. And Alan, he was a nervous wreck. I said, now's your time, boy. You're either going to fucking put up or shut up. <laughs> so we put up. <laughs> fucking probably a thousand people there. I'd have been like, man, put flame underneath that bad dude. Let's but get that it. Thing fired up. That guy gave me a half a chance. And I was all over it. Locked the gates down and said, have at it. Fuck you yeah. So we made liquor yeah. all day. That's fucking crazy. And then Robert wanted to steal so bad, I had to call Chad Earp and see if he'd sell it. He said he'd sell it. So Robert took it home with him. <laughs> Before then, he even knew he was going to sell it. <laughs> How did you get it? You tried to do Donnie steal. Yeah. Yep. Now he wants it back. Yeah, I know. I was talking to him the other day. He wants it back now. Man, that still has been passed around more than Sean's ex. <laughs> Almost as much as Sean. <laughs> Them glory holes get busy. Huh? Them glory holes get busy, huh? <laughs> yeah, they do. What? <laughs> I can't hear you. What? So, Don't start the I'll Actually, I'm not lying because, listen... This one don't work for some reason tonight. This one does. He dropped them. He dropped them. Huh? So, uh, your damn head. 
Hey, you'll have that. Why well, you got those on anyway? Why don't you just sit there? I am sitting here. I know you got stupid earbuds on. He he doesn't have the pleasure of being alone. <laughs> Sean has an eventful house at any moment. But um Peach is running around. So you know, my my favorite still that I've seen at a distillery was the um, Beaver Liquor. No, I like, that's my second. I like that too. Man, I I love that thing. I remember when you was live showing it. I was I was over there watching. I and then you know it's like, come on, man, learn how to use TikTok. <laughs> Let's see this thing. Well, the uh, that thing's getting a hundred gallon octagon pot hooked in. I got to send it to California this next week. I, I was going to ask you when that was going out. Well, I thought that was Chris ain't coming to the jam. He's not gonna be able to come. And they was bringing that hot rod. And they blew the damn engine up, so it's in the shop. Get another engine put in it, so it's not coming. So I was just gonna take that steel up and put it on the trailer with that car and send it back. But <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't know. But uh, yeah, there's uh, the well, never mind. What? Never mind. I'll talk to you. I'll tell you later about it. Okay. He probably forgot. That happens quite a bit for him. Yeah. Um, a little pee burn, you know. So, you, you know, we're here, you know. Uh, I want to hear about Mason Jar Mafia. Tell yep. Big Easy about Mason Jar Mafia. When did, when and how did Mason Jar Mafia start and how did it get to where it was? And, you know, and I know, you know, if the, you say what you feel, feel what you say, man, you know, and, and, that's how we get down here. So yeah, you know. how did how did that that come about? And uh, yeah, just talk a little bit about it. You don't have to go into you know whatever detail you don't want to. But well, I started that. I don't even know how long ago that's been. But I used to put it on every one of my tags I put on the steels. And it's poor here. That way, everybody that got them, I tried to keep. I was to the point where I didn't have to sell the stuff to just whoever. Yeah. Kind of selective in who I was building shit for or trying yeah. to be. Well, you know, I would think that's that's normal have. back then too. You know, you don't have a you don't know who to sell to, and it's not real big mainstream. On you know, well, I don't want to deal with dickheads. Well, that too. You know, well, I mean, because I'll end up. I, <laughs> that's why I don't. That's why I don't have no web page. Yeah, here. I want to talk uh, to who I'm dealing with. I want to talk to him on the phone. Yeah. You know, if they're a fucking asshole, then I'm not dealing with them because I end up cussing them out and spending their money back. So, <laughs> you know, people get very impatient with me because I take so long to do something. But I mean, when I start on one, I build it for me. You know, they you, you can't, you can't rush perfection, around. man. Like oh, you know, they didn't. Nobody rushed Picasso. They didn't say, "Hey, man, that painting better be done tomorrow." You know, you can't you can't rush art, and that's just the way it is. So, I mean, it, I could rush through some shit, but I'd rather take my time on some of the stuff and just yeah. make it different. I try to make them different. You know, I don't want every, I don't want everybody to have the same thing. Yeah. It's not, it's not yours. You know, it's a production line thing. You're not wrong. So, how, with the Mason Jar Mafia thing, how... How well, does it progress? Point, once upon a time, there was this guy. You can name him if you don't want to. It don't matter to me. 98% of the people probably know who you're talking about anyway. So anyway, <clears throat> we'll call him CK because I really don't like to say his name. I'm not going mm -hmm. to give him any kind of shout outs because he's a piece of shit. <laughs> so. We'll just refer to him as piece of shit. <laughs> I want to know who you're talking about. Yeah. Who? Piece of shit. Piece of shit. It's Chris Kelly. Right. We know who you're talking. <laughs> now we know who you're talking about. <laughs> so, I think we confused him. Yeah. My bad. I'll Don't just shut up. Much. Tell your story. So anyway, I started this Mason Jar Mafia. It's been a long time before I even met Chris. And he ended up. Long story short, we made some shirts and done all this other shit. And he sold all of them, and I told him just to keep the money, roll it over, and probably made, I would say, 10 to 15, probably grand on those shirts over the two years. And the son of a bitch ended up stealing my, having a copyright on my Mason Jar Mafia behind my back. 
And then he said he was going to send me what was left over of the shirts and the money. And I got two shirts and a, a fucking hat in a diaper <laughs> box from Kentucky. There ain't nothing worse than when, you know, a man. He, he could run with that and just, you know, keep making. But he, he ended up digging himself a hole. And he's having to live in it now. He's fuck him. You know, like I said, there ain't nothing worse than when a man goes back on his word. Yeah, and and you know that's that's all you got. You know, if you can't be trusted by your word and you don't do what you say, or or you rip somebody off for money, like money's money, man. Money comes and goes, but yeah, you know, you know to 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 just burn that bridge or just to, it made me feel like too big of a piece of shit. I couldn't live with myself. I'll just put it like that. Like, well, to, man, to, and, and, to take and, advantage of anybody would make me feel like that. Well, for and any not reason, only that, let alone money. <clears throat> these shirts, right? Rick was like, you know, big group of friends, <clears throat> which I know you've seen because they're some of them are probably still out circling now, or you know, and uh, they've got a bunch of people's faces on them. Well, there was a point in time when he was starting to try to charge people hundred bucks as a membership. Man. That ain't what it's about. What this all started was, I tried to keep the people yep. together to where if you had any problems with anything, you had enough people where you could hit up somebody and they're probably doing the same thing you're doing. You know, same match. So I tried yep. to get good people hooked together to where they could, you know, build their own little thing with each other and try, you know, to just not, <clears throat> I don't know, a little click, a little family. Yeah. And he yep. come in and screwed it all up. And, and when that falling out happened, uh, he made another click of people. And all of a sudden, those people, I mean, you both know, they're well hated on the Well, that's where Dusty Moonshine come from. That's, that's where he I, come from, yeah. I don't care to say anything <clears> about <throat> some bitches, because I wish they'd show up someplace. <laughs> There's they, they they, won't. There, there's no there's no love loss between old uh, Sean and Dusty Moonshine over there. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who we're talking about, <laughs> be fucking grateful. <laughs> and, and that's all that's all the publicity that dude gets. That's the yeah. that's piece of shit. So <laughs> I don't even know if I would consider him that high up in the food chain. <laughs> Still or huh? So what's going on with that? With what? Uh, Family of fucking hoodlums, your little master of stiller clan. How's that going? That's going all right, I guess. Really? Depending on what you're talking about. Huh? You don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, I said depending on what you are talking about. Oh, just the ones that run around like they want everything and didn't even fucking come in. They can come in. Her. What's your take on that? What's my take on it? I thought this was our podcast. I'm just asking. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, you know. If, if it's a competition for a reason. So, at at what point did you uh, did you? I, I guess I'd say branch off on your own. Was I mean, I understand it was after you know the big the fallout with you and I've always been on my own. And and, uh, and and you've maintained, you know, hey, you know, fucking Mason Jar Mafia's mine, you know, <laughs> like I'm the Godfather, bitch. <laughs> Just like I told him. I got the original fucking little sign that my wife printed off at her job that's laminated that's hanging on my wall. I told that motherfucker if he wanted to have that name, he can come take it off my wall. He could have it. Yeah. Other than yeah. that, go you know, fuck yourself and I'll use it anytime I want to. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I know there for a while, uh, every, a lot of guys on TikTok got behind you with the hashtag Mason Jar Mafia and just, you know, showing like, hey, man, you know, this is, this is the king. Look at the king's work. This is an uh, old shirt. Can you see that? No, you're like 400 feet away from the camera. Turn around. That's what he really wants to see. Oh, I've seen the shirt. With Sean, it's got Sean's face on it? No. <laughs> no. no. Uh, it's got Mason Jar Mafia on it. Every one of my shirts got Mason Jar Mafia. <clears throat> so he can kiss my ass. That's my shit. Well, you know, in my eyes, you know, you're the, you're the Mason Jar Mafia, man. You're the king. The <laughs> you shit about it. Do what? If he took me to court, he can't do shit about it. Because I've had it a lot longer than he had his fucking trademark. And but well, but, but then you know they gotta be in the same place as you, so and they that ain't never gonna happen. So. No. <laughs> Sent me a letter. 
Those seven yeah. degrees might help him out a little bit. <laughs> he sent me a letter to cease and desist, or he's going to take me to court. <laughs> and I bet he typed it up himself. Oh, I'm sure. He probably will Zoom. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I bet he stole it just from the internet because you, you couldn't type it himself. And he had somebody like, put your name on it. it. Anyway, I don't want to talk about that fucker no more. Change so, so, you know, tell us uh, what are, <clears throat> you know, you make these mason jar rigs and, um, thumpers and so what's the advantages of them like what do they do for the people listening that don't know what mason jar thumpers do like what are the advantages of them over just saying a single thumper or just a stripping or even plates i think it cleans your liquor up the more multiple jars you have on there it just cleans it up makes it a lot smoother the more you go through do you think it's cleaner I, than plates uh do you think it's cleaner than running it through plates i think so it don't strip it what do you think, Sean? You you've run plenty of jars and some plates. So how do you feel about? It? Do you think it's cleaner through like six no. jars as opposed to six, six plates? Those jars you can those plates. Yeah, yeah. I would run. I would rather run six jars than four plates. That's all. I've only run ran four plates, so that's all. I, I mean, I mean, I can you, really comment it, on personally. You know, I've tasted the difference in the infusion that those jars give. Um, that pumpkin spice made out there, I, uh, there at the Beaver, Beaver liquor. liquor. Man, <laughs> talk about it again. You know, like I bought two pairs of UGG boots after trying those. Trying that, <laughs> that pumpkin spice was so good, man. Like I wish I could buy a jar every October. And Chris is a good guy, dude. He can make some liquor. Yeah, I was, I was real impressed. Like, he can make some liquor. I tell you what, I would have liked to try that pumpkin spice when it was at like one eighty when it. When it was yeah. high and first coming out, I'd have loved to try it then. That's what people don't understand. Like with these stills, I mean, you could have you put out 180 proof, and you could actually sit there and taste it. You know, it's not going to fucking kill you. Like if you just run it on a regular still, and you got 180 proof, it's going to be really harsh. Yeah, yeah, yep. Well, and the beauty with them stills is, like, unlike you can do with a uh, uh, plate still, is you can infuse. You know, with plate stills, the only thing you can really do is throw a gym basket on it. <clears throat> I mean, you could throw jars after the plates, which I plan on trying eventually. But, but, but even uh, then, you're still running jars, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know. But you can, you know, put caramel in one, apple in the other, caramel again, and then apple. Or, you know, I, I do know some people that run clear bourbon. <laughs> clear bourbon, you say? Yeah. Urban bourbon. I like try me some urban bourbon. <laughs> I need to make some more shit. Yeah, I second that. You know, I mean, nice. Sean made some shit too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean's a master distiller. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah. I guess I guess r- running in out back is uh, below him now. You know, yeah, so he can't do that. He's got to be up at Sugar Land to run shit. That's that's what happens when you're a celebrity. Well, if that's the case, I'll be there Sunday, this coming Sunday. <laughs> Not today, the following Sunday. We will be in Gatlinburg on Sunday after the Hillbilly Jam. If if y'all want us to come run Sean's Liquor, let us know. We'll come knock it out right quick. Well, <laughs> it's still running first. I don't even think that thing they got in there is even hey, fuck up. it. We'll bring a still, too, man, in the mash. We got them. That's yeah. probably the first one ever ran in that place. Huh? Probably the first one ever ran up front. <laughs> well, they were supposed to do construction, and they ain't even touched it yet. <clears throat> but what do I know? I'm sure they're behind on everybody's. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it is what it is. Good liquor comes from OH. When y'all going to the gym? I know when you're going. Oh, when you're going easy. I'll be down there Friday at around three or four. I'm heading out Friday morning. Okay. Yeah. Jenny's going, so I'm gonna be coming down Thursday evening. I'm gonna leave. We're gonna leave about four, four thirty. And then you're stopping, right? You're stopping like Kodak or whatever. And I'm gonna try to get down to Kodak. If you go to Kodak, why don't just drive another thirty fucking minutes? Because I don't have anywhere to stay. Well, that's On your fault. Thursday night, yeah, you might as well find you a fifty dollar motel, sleep in, and. As long as, there ain't no, as long as there ain't no pool for you to stand next to and get drunk, you won't get in trouble. Won't so you call it, Alan? It, huh? Won't you just call Alan? 
I don't know if I want to drive that far, though, man. It depends what time we get out. Awesome. If we if we roll out uh, out of here at four o'clock, then I'll probably call him like, "Hey, can I stay there tonight somewhere?" If but not, you you right. already know, Rick. If he says he's leaving at four, it's he's leaving about it. seven. <laughs> <laughs> he said six. I'm going with seven. <laughs> we'll split the difference at six thirty. So about so, eight. Yeah, about eight. Damn right, about eight. Wait a minute, Rick. What time are you getting in? Yeah, I'm leaving straight for uh, Wednesday. So you going down Wednesday? Yeah, it takes or, two uh, hours to get there from work. So, I uh, was you ain't even far. You gonna be set up in the same spot again? Yeah, and I ain't bringing them. Hey guys, I'll be right back. Uh, Just take right. it over. I'll be right back. Sean's oh, gotta first. run. Yeah, I'll be right back. Dog's in trouble. It looks a lot better when he's. Uh, it just went up a notch. I gotta be in the picture. <laughs> Just went up. The video just got a lot better. <laughs> he's definitely got a face for a podcast. That's for sure. See if anybody else so. comes here while he's gone. So I, um, you never have nobody watch. <laughs> so I remember when you uh, you jumped on TikTok and it was like all of a sudden everybody on TikTok they wanted them a Tennessee Thumper setup. And I know you made a lot of. Quite a few setups for guys on TikTok, and you know, and it was real cool to watch those guys go from cake stills or basic small pots to now they got them. Uh, you know, like, it doesn't matter what you build; I consider it a distillery quality setup. You know, like like with still liquor, his thing could go from a keg to a a hundred gallon pot <laughs> in a matter of minutes. Oh, so, yeah. I mean. I try to make everything versatile to where you can swap it over and you never have to get anything else. Yes, just upgrade your pot and make everything yeah, bigger. Pots and then you move your pot that you had for your main pot to a thumper. You know, yeah. just rotate them. So you get where you want. That seems to be a lot what uh what a lot of people are doing nowadays is you know, like, oh I'm starting out here and I'm upgrading and I'm gonna take this pot and and make it my thumper now because I got a bigger pot. So yeah, I don't know. I'm going through a little stage. I'm just it's weird how everything has evolved in the Bouchons, I guess circle. Yeah. Where you used to have to work your way into something. Like really work your way into something. And now there's a lot of just hand out given, you know, what it seems like. You know, nobody has a history of where they come from. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of that is is being able to you know, you can see it, you know, you can see it a lot more. You can see it. You don't have to go see it in person or know that person to see it. Like, you know, you can watch a video and a lot of people show you how they do stuff. And, and so the, the information is spread so much quicker and more vast. It's making it to where, like you said, people don't have to put in the time to learn how to make it because somebody else did and it's there. And so, um, you know, it, you know, it, it, to me, you know, imitation is the biggest form of flattery. And well, if they you know, actually imitated it, it'd be different. But <laughs> things they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, and and you know, and I'm I'm a believer in if if uh, if you uh, like say you adopt something and you adapt it, and don't forget where it came from. Give credit to the person before you. Make sure that person, make sure that, you know, it's like, hey, man, you know, I, I took what this dude did and I made this for myself. And, but without him, I, you know, I couldn't have done this. So. That don't happen. No. He's it, still a piece of shit. <laughs> you, you can still be a piece of shit, you know. We still got to give a piece of shit his due. Like, he's still like, hey, man, yeah. It was soft the other day. He's a little hard now. He's old and hard now, but he's still, he's all right, piece of shit. So, did you have to go track down a dog, Sean, or? So uh, Braden said uh, some dude driving down the road was stopped and said they thought that he nipped him, hit him a little bit. Like as he dude was coming down the road, he thought a storm ran out in front of him. Uh, but she didn't. You have to get that dog a pen yeah. so it can chew it through out of it. It's like chew its way out of it. <laughs> Sad. Oh, man. That dog gives Sean more trouble than a woman. <laughs> he needs about three more of them. Yeah, I think he does yeah. need about three more of them. He needs uh, some more. He needs some more goats to chase around the yard too. He yeah, needs three or four more of those too. So, uh, Rick, do you uh, do you build stills for? 
people at home or do you just build stills for distilleries or what's the uh he he, the he, mi- he missed the part where we just talked about you was building stuff for people on tiktok didn't he oh did i okay <laughs> you had to go out and do whatever you have to do <laughs> had to chase that crazy ass dog that's what it is probably a dog's probably drunk trying to pick up dudes well, you know it's not drunk at <laughs> Sean's house. He don't have any liquor. The dog would even drink. <laughs> if he's got peach, if he's got peach schnapps, that dog will drink it. We know that. Yeah. Did you ever hear the peach schnapps deal, Rick? No. You gonna? He's told it to everybody on here, so he might as well tell it to you too. What the fuck, you didn't tell me. <laughs> you ain't been on here yet, fucker. So, what? anyway, I got some peach schnapps. Just putting thumpers, you know. And uh, I had it for fucking ever. And I had it sitting on the uh, countertop. Well, I went in the bedroom one day and come back out. The bottle of peach schnapps was laying on the kitchen floor. Somehow she got it off the the countertop and didn't bust it. It was on the kitchen floor. But she chewed the lid off of it and she was drinking the, the peach schnapps out of it. Damn. So yeah. I call it peaches. Tell her she can handle her liquor better than you can. <laughs> oh, yeah, she can. She also drank so much because that was the only time she ever tasted good liquor in Sean's house. <laughs> Damn. Damn. <That's... laughs> Shots <laughs> fired. Shots Dusty. fired. Dusty can teach you how to make liquor. Who, oh, Dusty? Yeah. Man, look, I can go to work and get water to use on the show, and I will still make better liquor than Dusty. Uh, pretty clean water. I it think will... I could piss in the pot and make better liquor than Dusty. <laughs> well, see, that's what I'm getting at. It's shit water. <laughs> we, we circled back to Dusty, didn't we? We knew this was happening. But you know, say, so, hey man, you might as well tell the story, man. Tell the deal, Sean. You know, we you all keep talking about Dusty Moonshine, so you know, tell your quell with the man. Like, what's the deal? He just talks too much. <clears throat> um, you know, apparently in the past when I did make liquor, I made uh, sugar shine. And that, you know, that, that's his take. Well, he don't realize <clears throat> he talks shit about sugar, sugar this, sugar that. Well, he goes by Dusty Moonshine, which apparently he's either ignorant or just stupid because he don't know what moonshine is. Back in the day, moonshine was basically liquor with sugar added. Corn liquor is converted corn liquor. Converted corn, you know, starches into sugars. That's corn liquor. He's stupid, and he acts like he's some god. So he he thinks he, he thinks he's the moonshine god, and, and just you know wants to make sure that you know that he's better than you, and and yeah. you know instead of just you know have have some humility, man. Like you ain't no better than the next person or or this person or that person. Just know your role, know your place, man, and. And I, you know, I, like, I did send an invite, you know, if he wanted to make a, uh, if he wanted to come to the jam, this was a while back. I said, if you want to come to the jam, bring your best converted corn liquor and I'll bring a jar of infused shine, sugar shine with no corn added. We'll see what happens. Challenge is still out there. Yeah. Bring it, boy. Bring it, Dusty. Bitch. They will never show up at any of those events. They yeah, won't make it through the gates. And so he was—he was also uh, he's also part of the the Mason Jar Mafia ordeal from before, correct? No, he's part of the new. Well, the group. new, yeah. Okay, so he was where you talked about. He got a new group. Uh, I CK, swear to God, CK I got a, got a new group market. and started charging, and so he's one of the new guys who came in and and thinks his shit don't stink, and he's yeah. he's People, top he's top of the food chain not. and. I don't think he pays. I think he just sucks his way in. Hey, man, you know, you got to – $20 is $20, hey, man. You know, he wears them promotion. Jar of liquor is a jar of liquor no matter how you get it, I guess. <laughs> like, I'd rather make it myself. I'm trying to stick it in him. <laughs> the whole jar, is he the original jar man? That's – we just figured out who the original jar man was. If you don't know who the mason jar man is, then you're missing out on TikTok. Go to TikTok, type in the mason jar man. You're going to hate the fact that you did, but be glad you did also. Mason jar man. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be like, oh, fucking biggies. I hate that son of a bitch. Maybe go watch this. It ain't too so bad because it's on TikTok. But. 
back when you did run liquor, what was your favorite liquor to run? And what kind of yeast did you use when you fermented that? I've always used Lashman's bread yeast. I got some distiller's yeast from, where did I get it from? Bud Kelly at uh, his distillery. I didn't like it. You got to baby it too much. Is that was that like that dry active distillers yeast from Red Star I, that you see? Probably Daddy, if I had to guess, because him and Nick King were. Yeah, yeah. It's just a big old, big old. <clears throat> and I, I didn't like it. It worked good the first time, but the second time it stuck. So I dumped Flashman's in it and fucking stirred it up, and four days later I run it. Every time somebody messages me off YouTube or Facebook. And they're like, man, I'm stuck. My my pH is good and, and my temp is good. And I'm like, dump some bread yeast in that son bitch, man. It'll get done. And they well, dump bro. bread yeast in it, man. And it usually just finishes it off for them. I don't know. I guess my favorite. I don't drink anyway, so I don't really care. Yeah. Yeah, but if you was to drink, you know, like what's the favorite thing that you would make for yourself? Because everybody's got something. Like I'm not a big drinker, but if I was to make it for myself, you know, I'll make me a big old thing of banana brandy, and and then I'll have that to sip on. So you know, even not being a big drinker, you know, what do you like? What's your favorite thing to make for yourself? Was the stuff that uh, shit Tiffany had oh. Tiffany Sparks that uh, honeysuckle, the yeah honeysuckle. Okay. That was pretty good actually when it was cold. So is it? So that was your favorite thing to drink was the honeysuckle. I mean, if I had to drink some, I'd probably be it. I kind of want to taste the apple pie, but I just don't like the when you put liquor in it. <laughs> you just like apple cider, is what you're saying. <laughs> like, Rick likes apple cider <laughs> with all the sugar in it, with all the sugar and cinnamon and everything, but the liquor. Tastes nice. I'm like, I tasted some apple pies at the fall jam that didn't taste like they had any liquor. <laughs> so you'd probably you drink that a lot of people's stuff. Yeah. So what's the uh, worst liquor you ever had, Rick? Tasted or had given to you? Well, which time? The Every worst you, the worst you've me you no know, more at the jam. I used to hand me all kinds of shit. And it was horrible. There's not not a not a single time that comes to mind about the worst like, like you you spit it out type shit. Well, I did spit it out, and you know the story on that. I'm not gonna say whose it was because they're gonna be very butt hurt. <laughs> yeah, I mean we don't name name. I spit out liquor he twice. Tried, hey, he knows who I'm, he knows what it is. Uh -huh. yeah, it happens, man. You know, like, it happens. As long as it wasn't mine, that's all I care about. Yeah, I've tasted I, yours too. I, yeah. I'm re I'm really I surprised that, that I'm really surprised that Rick's first answer wasn't the last jar you gave me, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I was kind of figuring it was the worst stuff I've ever tasted. Is the stuff we made at that damn festival. <laughs> is that the it's it's horrible? Just, I got was that the, right here? Was that the bucket of blackberry wine? Is that is yeah, that what it was? Wine. Yeah, the wine. Well, it's got that sulfur. That salt, you know that that just that. Yeah. <laughs> High fruco, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> God is still Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Rick, Rick just got drunk from spilling it on himself. Yeah, it's gonna soak in me. Damn man, you put on about thirty pounds, didn't you? Who me? It's yeah. a camera angle. I told you not to go from the top down, man. Calm down. Don't get all juicy. <laughs> You're getting Sean all worked up now. Yeah, he likes some dad bods, bods, apparently. He does. He likes some granddad bods. I'm a papa bod. He wants to braid your gray back hair. I'm going to have to grow this back out. I've been saying that. I'm trying. For a few weeks. Is it growing back out? Huh? Is it growing out? Yeah. It's more so, white than it was, but it's growing. Sean? Sean said you and him was going to wear. Uh, and it runs into family. Wear tan overalls at the. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. Jam. I think I'm gonna wear some overalls, man, and make some people ask questions. Ask questions about what? Why the fuck you wearing overalls? Tell me none of their goddamn business. I don't fit the part. Huh? 
I don't fit the part. No, you wear those stupid mud boots, those goddamn rubber boots. <laughs> those boots. Like your face go way through a goddamn mud hole somewhere. Dude, he, he had them things on in Beattyville. It was like 400 degrees. Idiot. <laughs> and, you know, I'm just out here sweating and burning up. And Don't and worry. Oh, s- old George s- Rhodes is coming. I'll have them on for him. Same thing in old new Strasville, man. I'm just out here. It's, I'm baking, you know. I got, the doors off the shirt, shorts on. I'm just sweating, and he's over here, t shirt and jeans and boots and <laughs> hat. And I'm just like, dude, I'm hot looking at you, hotter than I already am. Bring those stupid boots with you to Maggie Valley. You know, he absolutely is absolutely planning on it. He's it's probably gonna wear them. Then I'll probably t- wear Hey Dudes all the way down, and then as soon as I get there, I'll probably put them on. There's I tried to get a pair of Hey Dudes. Hey, Hey Dudes were recommended to me by old, uh, by old Judd. And he was like, dude, you're a big dude. I'm a big dude. I love these hey dudes. They're the most comfortable thing. And I went dude. to get a pair, and they just didn't have a, a size big enough for my big ass butt. Man, and I'm like, well, if I had them when maybe I filmed, I'd been wearing them then. And then I'd been looking for a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking. Hey, dude, you want to send me a pair of uh, size 13 all black ones? I'll promote them to you. I'll promote them for you guys. I need like two or three pairs, though. Damn, you, sell like, you sell like somebody else from TikTok. <laughs> hey, send it to me for free. I'll wear it. You know, I just want a still. Yeah, Rick. Rick, won't you sponsor me a still? Yeah, sponsor me a hundred gallon still, Rick. That's not. I'm not the one you need to call. You need to call the other place in Georgia. <laughs> I ain't paying, man. I, I, that's. Just, I'm not paying. Like, if I'm advertising, other it, people didn't pay. <laughs> well. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, apparently you're not uh pimping out your master distiller status, Sean. He should that be pimping himself out a little more, huh? Win got free shit. Huh? People that didn't win got free shit and you won didn't get shit. And that goes back to your comment before. So do you make pots, Rick, or is it just the uh do you make the actual pot and just the head. Or- you just make you just make the top ends and the, yeah. the thumper jars. Have you ever made you a pot? No, I played around with some thin copper and done small ones, but nothing. He can get pots made. Yeah. Well, you know, I just you know, I just said no. Oh, baby, yeah. you know, he... time with the stainless stuff, how I could get my brother to do it cheaper than what I could do it. Yeah. But then all that blew up. So dude, that shit was awesome. Them stainless. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I just don't. I don't know. It's too much just, time, too much work. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you, you do what you love, man. And it seems like you love making mason jar setups. And I want to do copper setups just to piss everybody else off and copy all my shit. <laughs> you know, so and, I, I get my first stop done. I want to have me a roller and everything. I want to fuck up all of them. I want to do the same shit they've done to me. Hey, man. Dude, if you made stills, they'd sell. Like, if. <laughs> You rolled stills and you made stills. They'd sell. People would buy them. They buy them right along with your, with your jar setups. You know, and I'm sure that you you'd master that and you'd make some beautiful shit. You know, you'd make some amazing works of art on that too. You know what though? If if you were to go, I don't want to say corporate, but like a big business kind of thing. If you had like four or five people working for you, dude, you can make a lot of fucking money just on your name. Yeah, like you know, like. Le- legit, man. Like, like I said, it, they're yeah. But then you got to have trust to do it. And... Well, I know. Yeah, that's my. Problem. I don't trust somebody to do it. <laughs> that's yeah. understandable. It's like, look, man. It's got my name on it. I'm doing it myself. I'll make sure it's right. Yeah, you I know? don't think that I've ever had a. I mean, not. I mean, they ain't brag, but a complaint about anything on any of them. Yeah, like, you know, you let Sean do it, you wind up with a, a whole a whole joint not soldered and water well, leaking in and shit. That's and, the wish version of Tennessee Thumper. And and then like you <laughs> gotta make my big ass le- lean into a barrel, like <laughs> just Maybe cut just, it out. We yeah. ain't talking about that. That stayed here. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible, man. I didn't what happened. <laughs> so I already put it out point. there. At one point in time, I think it was about seven years ago, <laughs> you know, before statute of limitations, but uh, I had that 100-gallon pot, that stainless pot, and I made that four, 
that condenser that went four pipes down. Oh, and I'm over. Yeah, FYI, yeah. this was like six months ago. Uh, <laughs> statute of limitation bullshit, nothing. <laughs> this was like six months ago. <laughs> and, and, and so, about seven years ago, dickhead. Yeah, and so he gets this thing filled up and everything, and you know, like we put water in it, and we're like, dude, it's got water coming out the condenser. He made he made like a you know, what was it a four pipe condenser? Is that what mm-hmm. it was or two? Four? Mm-hmm. It, it was amazing. It was just like one of the ones that you make, Rick. It was beautiful, but it actually you know? didn't work right. Yeah, well, I, I said like, you know, I didn't say it was. I said it was like, you know, it, it was it was kind of like it. And, it's like and, a and, wish it's, version. It's, yeah, you know, it was the wish version. It was Tennessee Thumper wish version, yeah. and uh, and so we fill this barrel up and sitting there, and it's just it starts spitting, you know, like looking at it, looking at it, and and I'm like, dude, look at that, Joe. There's that so that one's not soldered, man. That one's not soldered. There's a little bit of water coming out of the stem, and a little you know, bit, it, a lot. and and you know, we're ever thinking like, well, maybe, maybe it's just water that was left. You know, we're rationalizing what it is. And then I get to look in, and I'm just like, dude, I don't think that's got solder on it, man. That Look how that one joint there doesn't look like all the other ones. And so we unhook it, and we drain it, and sure as hell enough, that's something, man, whole fucking, that whole unit, whole elbow did not have solder on either side. So he did some patty there, didn't he? Yeah, he did. I was like, man, your dad should have checked this for you. What the hell? Maybe drive all the <laughs> way over here. Man. And, and so he's like, well, I can't reach it to, to cut it. And I'm like, well, I guess it's up to me to... I leave my big ass in this barrel and I'm trying to cut it with this thing and I finally get it cut and then we put it all back together. I'm trying to tape this union after we get it put back together and then we finally get it all done and I'm like, well, that's it for today, Sean. We ain't running that fucking still today, man. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Damn. Oh, yeah, another thing. Here we, we go. We had Alan Bishop on here and y'all talking shit about <laughs> bills together. Man, fuck y'all. I, you blame me for any of that. What do you mean can't blame me for any of that? Hey, I we totally had your back. Your we put huh? everything in your truck. Everything who in your truck. Who? 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 We, I did. I helped, I helped put it in there. If you, can you re- if you can remember correctly, I totally said that it was operator error. <laughs> it was Sean's fault. I had your back on that one. <laughs> Here's what happened. I'll tell you the truth what happened. So we get everything in there. Sean's taking his time. He won't let me put anything in the truck. He's putting it all in there so he can put this one up front, this one in the back, this one here, this one there. Yeah, and ask so him what he done. I, who did I have come get you? Was it JB, Sean? Probably. I can't remember. I had somebody come get Sean to help him do something. And as soon as he left, I took everything and swapped it from back seat to front seat. Had about four pieces, five pieces from each one of them swapped over. And then those bastards wouldn't even call me whenever they're trying to put it together. No. No. Why would we do that? So I could have helped you out. You would not have helped us out. I would well, you probably would. You probably would have, but you've been laughing at us and calling us dumb fucks for an hour and a half. I'm sure so he was doing that when you called him. <laughs> I was doing that before. <laughs> I knew, like, hey, he's dumb son of a bitch. I ain't never getting that together. <laughs> I would have, too, man. That's well played, Rick. Well played. And Sean wasn't even going to say nothing about it. Al was one that let the beans out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sean was just going to figure it out. He was in no way going to. Because Alan actually called me hit me with motherfucker. Fuck <laughs> you, mother. <laughs> motherfucker? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Man, it, you should have been a fly on the wall, dude, because we had shit just scattered all over his fucking property, man. Oh, I could imagine. Uh, and see, was fun. they all come apart. You can un- unstack them and shit. So yeah. there was fucking pieces everywhere. A jigsaw puzzle. Well, and, and we went from Maggie that year, because that was when my cousin Tracy was with us. We went from Maggie over to Gatlinburg. And we were there for like two days or a day or two. We just parked in the fucking bag and covered it up with tarp and nobody fucking touched nothing. But, yeah, and then when we got back, I didn't even think nothing about it by the time I got to Alan's house. And he's like, what the fuck? This don't match up to this, but this is what it's supposed to be. (laughs) (laughs) This don't go there. That don't go here. It's like, this comes from the pot. What the? What? And they fuck. Like I said, I I said, Rick did that shit on purpose. And you know damn well, he was sitting over there just 
Mr. Burns laughing like, come on. <laughs> Looking at his phone like these dumb son bitches. One of them's got to. One of, them, one of them's got to hit me up. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yeah. But um, so you got anything new going on, Rick, as far as uh, still wise? Or what yeah, you got anything for some distilleries? Like you got any distillery um, jobs That's going on? Yep. It's uh, like Chris. I'm talking to some dude in Idaho, and another guy someplace else. I don't remember Colorado. I think that's opening up distilleries. You know what? They're opening up distilleries in Idaho and Colorado. I think Colorado. Okay, can't remember. Isn't that out there where uh, she was, buddy? Is that uh, Austin? Uh, Balmer Peak. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. I guess he's in a little small place. I listened to a podcast not too long ago. Yeah, he was, real, he was real good to listen. Never listen seen to. that podcast. Do what? Never seen that podcast that you speak of. You should check it out sometime. Nah, I'll pass. So, uh, you know, we're all going to Maggie Valley. We're going to be there this weekend. Um, here it is uh, Sunday night. We're going to be there. I'm getting down there Friday. Sean's getting down there Friday morning. Apparently, Ricky going Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Save, the two, save, save the two spots next to you for uh, Sean. I'll have the whole strip. All right. So I know that they said that this is the biggest one. They sold out all the vendor locations and it's going to be pretty big this year. So we're look, I'm looking forward to it for sure. I cannot wait. It's going to be very, very interesting this year. Oh, oh, I know for what we talked about earlier. <laughs> I'm <Yep>. excited. <laughs> me too. It's, uh, I'm gonna have me a couple of these. That's like that's like just spraying for bugs or something. Having that dude come over there, it's just like spraying for bugs. The other bugs are gonna come near me. Well, you know. So is uh, are you gonna get stuck to bed again this this time, Rick? Are you I gonna be so. uh, you gonna be uh? Calling your son to come get you off the bed. I hope so. See, we're all we're all staying at real close to the fairgrounds, so we we don't have to drive anywhere. I'm staying with Jimmy Jackson. The cabin's behind it. So cool. <laughs> He's getting stuck to a bed then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting stuck to a bed. Oh yeah. You, uh, st- stay. With- Stay away from them holes, man. <laughs> holes in the wall. Well, that's what, you know. Both have and a two-pound joint this year. Jesus. Two that's pounds. What, uh, two pounds? Yeah. Jesus. But that's what DR, DRC was saying. He was like, man, he said, uh, what do I do with my stuff? He said, do I – at the end of the day, do I pack it up and take it out? I'm like, man, shit gets locked down. Nobody fucks with nothing. I ain't never took my stuff out of there. Yeah, everybody just drops their tent down and rolls out. You know, and, and I've been up there with a whole bunch of shit before. <laughs> last well, year, man, you've been the, locked in. The, yeah, you the know, stuff you, the stuff you had last year. <laughs> I like was, hell that year that I that Sean and Alan I had a whole bunch of shit that year. Oh fuck! You had a trailer full, enclosed trailer, and your truck and everything else. You bringing that big trailer again, full of shit? No. I got one set up. One? Yeah. Whose set up is it? Well, it was going to be uh, Marcus's. But oh, yeah. Computer failure. Yeah, you'll have that. So it's going to be whoever wants it. How much is it? What do you want to get for it? <laughs> I'm not what do you want for it, Dick? <laughs> Big Easy needs it. My, Send it home. Send it home. got the bypass on it, Big Easy. I don't know what that is. I just spent too much time with Sean. I don't know what Man, the bypass is. Every still I so. build now has a fucking bypass, so you can suck it. Well, here's the thing about that. How many stills do you ever hear about with the bypass until I've done a bypass? Did nobody, nobody, bypass wasn't nobody. even a thing until Hooch didn't get one, and we bullied Sean about not putting a bypass on Hooch's. Yeah. Set up until now, it's the standard. Now, if I you don't have bypasses. a bypass, then 
You want to bypass? Yeah, it's, it. it's extra money. Hey, does anybody ever get any credit for that? No. Don't look at me, motherfucker. Hey, I would like my credit for bullying Sean into <laughs> worldwide. Everybody bullies bypasses. <laughs> I mean, look at him. I don't look at him. I try, I try not to, man. Good boy. Never mind. Don't look He's at him. He's some ugly son of a bitches. No, don't man. take eye contact with him. I will say, man, this is definitely a, a, a trio made for audio and not so much video. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't y'all get somebody else on here so I can t- ask them questions, too? Who you want on? Yeah. Who do you want on? Who can We're capable of it. Huh? Who could re- really fuck up? We're gonna we're gonna invite CK and and oh I love that. <laughs> we invite old Dusty on too, you know. Hey, oh, open invite I CK and Dusty beef against Dusty. Except y'all more than welcome. Uh, you know, it's for anybody you know that wants to come on. You know, if you've got time and whatever, let us know. We'll get you on. Yeah. If you want to come on here, message one of us, and we can make it happen. Oh, you're the magic man, ain't you? The magic man. The magic magic man. Tom Rigby, master distiller. (laughs) You bringing your banner with you, Sean? Huh? You bringing your banner? My banner? Yeah, it says master banner. I mean, master distiller. He is. Did you say winner? Well, you are a winner. Oh, yeah. And that's what makes everybody else look so bad. Because my dumb ass. Won't. Yeah, because they make fun of you being stupid and you kick yeah. everybody's ass. Hey, simple, simple. Bread yeast works. Been saying it for years. Dick. Been saying it for years. So, Have I ever told man. you anything that wasn't true? Huh? Have I ever told you anything that wasn't true? Still wise. Still wise. <laughs> Come to think of it, I don't believe so. I could be wrong, but um, yeah. Hold on a second. Easy. What you- I'm a big uh, old dog. Always comes up about an hour into the show and says hi. Uh, the big old man. Uh, he'll be yeah. He'll be twelve. Now he's screaming to go outside. So what else are you doing for uh, Chris coming? Cummings to, uh, Distillery, other than just a pot. Uh, getting this pot, power off of it, and then I build a thumb attachment with a three way valve for it to either go to the uh, a condenser off of that 100 gallon or it's going to go to the jar setup. So, so what's he going to do with the 50 gallon pot that he's using right now? He uses it uh, for stripping or second runs. He's using it for pocket before. But now he's got that big pot. That he just got, so I don't know what he's gonna do with it. Well, here soon he'll have another big pot. Yeah. And by soon, I hope I don't mean six months. Hopefully. Uh, so, yeah. Are, are y'all are y'all <laughs> talking about the pot that needs to go out to the west coast? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, that the damn pal- the crate didn't float off in the flood we had here because it's sitting out behind my building. <laughs> part of it's floating away and I had to grab it and drag it up the yard good thing the pot wasn't on it but I told Sean if you're going to take six months to get it out there you might as well let us borrow it it's above Sean's <laughs> <paper>. <laughs> it it's all good I'd be the it's one running it anyway so <laughs> it'd get run right <laughs> uh. It's got two ports coming out of it, don't it? Two what? Two port, two two inch pot or ports coming out of the top. Yeah. Then it don't take two, two inch ports on the top. A eight inch or a six inch cover to pour it down in, and got two, two inch ports on the bottom for the uh, heat elements. That's about it. Hell yeah. Oh, I'm doing well, Royce daily that I got to get going on. I finally got an idea how I want to do it. Jesus Christ. Make sure you send pictures to Sean. It'll confuse him. Oh, I can see him. 
Well, I understand that, but he'll show me and then I'll explain it You'll to explain him. You'll explain it to him? Yeah, that's how we do it. <laughs> no, no, no. The way it works is when you're fucking talking on the phone, the way you explain things are just stupid. <laughs> when you show me well, pictures so I can see what the fuck you're d- talking about. Colored pictures. pictures. How something, you know, tell me, you know, if I knew how something worked. It's a three-chamber steel or something. Do you know how three-chamber steel works? Yeah, I know how it works, motherfucker. Just curious. Anyway, <laughs> he up big terms and fucking words, and I said, hey, hey, I have to dumb this down for somebody that don't understand these big words. I I'm I'm build shit, and I'm fixed. I don't fucking look words up in the dictionary. So I dumbed it down. I said, well, that's easy to do. And that's how we ended up building his steel. Who's? Allen's. Once he dumped it down, I explained to him how it worked, and it, he said, "Yeah." So that's how we did it. It started out was going to do like a one jar little thing. And they still couldn't put it together. No, they just go fuck that up. <laughs> oh, shit. They just go fuck that up. Y'all are lucky it had fucking unions on it, not tri clamps, because y'all would have been there forever with tri. Yeah, would have been there forever. Because at least the unions, you can match the unions up. Fucking tri they all look the same. In theory. In theory you didn't figure that out. It, de- it, depend- it depends on who's doing it, who's matching, you know. Yeah. I would have helped y'all. You just had to call me. No. <laughs> no. When it comes to some stupid shit like that, you'll never get a call. From me anyway. Did that actually thank me again because I had one of my buddies have to actually teach you how to do the pH test on his moonshine. Who the fuck does pH? Rick so, Al. I don't even know how to check pH. Man, Rick, you, Al. you gotta check it when you're doing a sour mash. That shit's gonna crash, man. No, you don't, Big Easy. I've never checked my pH a, level. Exactly. You just throw a buffer in there and call it done. Hope it I, fucking works. I, I throw that goddamn bread you sit in there and fucking roll with it. <laughs> never have I pH level, and I've so, never had a mash crash. So, how'd you meet Sean? How'd y'all meet? He was going to get a steal from me. He's going to get a steal. So, like, how how did you become Maggie aware Valley. of Maggie Valley? Go Your ahead and tell me. So, a long time ago, I was going to get a steal from Rick, and uh, there was three guys: Rick, CK, and then another guy that. I'm not going to mention because, fuck, it's been so damn long ago. Uh, They had a – they were talking about opening a distillery or whatever, going in business together. I don't know. And uh, I paid Rick the deposit for that. So I don't remember if it was 200 or 400 or whatever. You know, I paid you the deposit and then you took the still. And he was on his way back because he lived in Ohio. Well, something happened. They had a falling out and tried to get a hold of him. And we, and Rick called me. He's like, hey, man, you get a hold of him? I'm like, well, no. Same thing with him. He couldn't get a hold of him and just couldn't make it happen. So well, it was like the next year or something. You were like, hey, you know, that's not how I do business. You know, we're going to hook up, make it right, and sure as shit. Uh, he called me. He was like, hey, you going to Maggie Valley in February? And I said, well, yeah. He was like, all right, well, I have it still waiting on you. So, uh, huh? You got that crooked pop six jar. And I got that crooked pop fucking six jar. First run was 178. That's because you didn't know what you're doing. On a, ma- a weak mash. And the highest I hit with that was 187. Nice. Uh, that thing was stupid. But jars don't work, remember? But, you he know, had, and, I mean, and, just like, and from that, you know, developed this. Shit show of a friendship. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And just like that, you know, I mean, like anything else, you know, I was skeptical when I first seen the shit online. I'm like, there's no way that works as well as it does. There's no yeah. fucking way. Yeah, sometimes you well, just got to do does. it, man. And it does. See, what the people don't realize now is what it was like back then whenever I was had these things posted pictures. I mean, I was by myself arguing with fucking thousands of people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. thousands of people. And now, now, now you got a, you got an army behind you of well, people I mean, that will just. I know the fucking things work, you know. I know, but I, I'm just saying, like people that know, you know, like people that will stand behind your product and behind your name now, like 
But so you've you've done the hard work and you put it in and it's proven, tried and true and you know and it definitely it, it cha- it's it's a it's a change you know it's a it's a generational change to moonshining that that will never go back like that's gonna that's something that'll be here forever and, you know at least I think it will be because yeah. of the advancements that it brought and what you could do with it. And then, you know, I'm sure that somewhere down the long line, somebody's going to figure out a way to take it to the next step. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's the evolution and it's really cool, you know, to, to talk to somebody who, who changed the game, like, you know, who has something that really, really changed the game. And you definitely changed the game when it came to distillation and, and infusion, especially infusion. Um, This dude just comes up with stupid shit. But all the time. I mean, but it works. That's all that matters. It's just so. like he'll call me and start telling me something. I'm like, that's just fucking stupid. Man, really? you know, Sean learns in color pictures. Well, I don't want to too much. I'll still go back to looking windows and have to wear a helmet. <laughs> we accept him. Put too much on him at one time. <laughs> Pictures, man. Colored pictures. Has anybody even watched this stupid thing? Dude, we've had nine, ten people the whole time. Yeah. And then people listen to us on Spotify and stuff. There's somebody in Russia. They download every episode. Man, don't talk about Russia. And yeah, they like yours, man, over there in Russia, boy. Dude. There's somebody. They're right on the, they're right on the edge. They like that vodka. Every episode, you know, like. Well, you know, I think it's a, it's a little different. You know, you go to like even Allen's the uh, Distillers Talk and and uh, Rick, your favorite one. Uh, what's that called? Easy. Untaxed. Untaxed. Where where everything where everything's edited. You know, this ain't fucking edited. So what people are watching now is what they're going to get. As soon as we're done, this goes live. I mean, it's live right now. Yeah, it goes on and YouTube. As soon, yeah, as soon as it's done, it's boom on YouTube. And, and then in about an hour, it's available on Spotify, Amazon. And nobody has questions. You don't have to set up like that where they can comment. No, like yeah, they can comment. comment. People They're comment, asking. but we we don't answer them because you know, like the people listening and even you know watch it watch it later on. The comments don't that questions don't come up, and and yeah. so you know eventually we'll start answering questions, but. Maybe you do all the talking, Big Easy, so to keep it simpler. That's what it's pretty much how it goes, you know. I I'm, talk to me; they'll get technical, right? Yeah, well, I, I lead I, I lead the show, and, and <laughs> you know, when when I need a window clean, I just tell Sean, and he cleans it. So I'm sure it's only because Rick can't get higher than three foot. Down. Hey, Rick, I just want to let you know uh, your buddy Brian is on here commenting. Brian, so cop. But anyway, so anyway, so we've had everybody on here for about an hour and twenty minutes. So I think no comment. I think that's going to wrap this up. You know, uh, you know, I'm honored and and really appreciative that honored. you gave us an hour. <laughs> I'm, I'm honored, man. You, ain't you don't, you don't know. <laughs> you big easy. Y'all, eat, y'all eat shit. Fuck off. Fuck y'all. I'm honored that you're on here, man. You know, I'm I'm really amazed by what you make and and he damn right slap your face with it Rick. i got twenty dollars for you at the jam man it's cool oh dick yes. i'll be off the jam everybody need to come out to the jam yeah come out to the jam this weekend jam. man i'll be there on the 22nd 23rd rick will be there on the 20th 21st i'll be there all week rick's yeah, only there and i'll be explaining what his systems does yeah you come out and then somebody's got to I'll be sitting there shooting the shit. It's going to be a good time. And we're going to party afterwards right next to it at the hotel. So, hell and, yeah. Uh, and, you know, this maybe this time um, somebody can help Rick get Sean up the steps because he's too drunk to walk himself. Oh, well, he ain't got to go upstairs that. this time, man. It's a, it, it was a trade off, you know, first, first floor. First, Sean gets Rick off the bed and then. Rick helped Sean up the steps, you know. I didn't what, help him too much. I couldn't barely make up the steps either. <laughs> That's what family does for each other, you know. <laughs> dad takes care of the son, son takes care of the dad. So, uh, well, yeah, we appreciate y'all listening and appreciate y'all being here. Hope y'all have a good night and I'll see you Friday, Rick. All right. I'll so, see you sooner, probably. Hey, y'all have a good night. All Shine right. on. Shine on.